What's up y'all and welcome to the channel. I wanted to provide a quick and timely update for how did the 2024 Perseids meteor shower go? Well, stick around. I've got three key takeaways I'd love to share with y'all and be sure to stick around at the end for a wild surprise. Takeaway number one was meteor activity. I felt like this year there weren't nearly as many huge streaking across the sky meteors as there were in 2023. Now that being said, once I've put together some of my time-lapse videos from shooting over a long period of time, you see a ton of activity along the horizon. And what I found this year was extremely frustrating is even pointing my camera pretty much due north or towards the radiant point, I felt like the meteors were all over in other directions besides where my camera was pointing. As a matter of fact, I feel like the brightest and best meteor that I saw was actually on Thursday evening, and that was right after sunset, so, you know, a couple days before the peak, uh, which was Monday morning, and I don't know, it was bizarre. We were driving back from shooting sunset at Sotol Vista, and this was the craziest meteor. It felt like it went on for like 10 to 15 seconds. So bright, you could see the green with your naked eye, and of course, we're driving in the car, but whatever. I did manage to get a couple of keepers this year that have integrated very nicely into some of my final shots. Takeaway number two, if you watched my video from uh, prior to the meteor shower, one of my goals was to actually use a star tracker this year to keep a certain portion of the sky in frame the entire night. Well, the problem with this was the first couple of nights, it was so windy that I could not get a decent exposure, even at like 30 seconds. So finally, the morning of peak, which was Monday morning, I was able to get my tracker going. Uh, and what I did here, which I thought worked really nicely, was I was able to use a 21 millimeter lens, so slightly zoomed, but still gave me a good bit of sky. And I had my tracker on and I set my exposure time for just 30 seconds. So that way I didn't have star trailing like I typically would. And I was able to close or stop down my aperture one or two stops, and then also decrease my ISO so that my images were in fact much cleaner than if I had not tracked. This particular morning, I, I did start shooting at like 2.30. I wished I had started it right after the sun went down, but honestly, we were completely beat from hanging out in Big Ben. And lastly, takeaway number three was, holy crap, Northern Lights and the Perseids meteor shower? No way. If you had told me going into this weekend that I would get both, I would tell you you're full of it. Well, the morning I woke up, Monday morning, 2.30, I'm out getting my cameras going, and what does one do when you're sitting under the stars sometimes? Well, I started checking Instagram. One of my great photography buddies, Kadar, uh, I'll put his Instagram handle here, he was actually just up the road in Fort Davis near the McDonald Observatory, and he said, oh my God, I can't believe this, Northern Lights. And so sure enough, I checked the back of my camera screen on my monitor, and there was the faintest glow of magenta coming from the north. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, so here is a time lapse of the evening from shooting until, from about 2.30 up until sunrise. And you can tell right before the sun rises, it really starts to go off. And I was able to create an incredible image that I'm so very proud of because I think it, it incorporates all the goals I set forth. So I tracked some of the meteors that were in frame. I had a nice clean foreground with B Mountain, so you can see it's lit up kind of nicely by the buildings at the base, which you hate, but it also added uh, to the allure of the image. The northern lights, and it's just an image that I absolutely love, and I'm so, so proud of because, quick story, this year has been one of, I, I hate to call it misfortune, but my photography luck has been nothing all year. I road tripped to Georgia in the Airstream and stayed with my family for a whole month. And 
the day I left, we are, you know, midway back in Mississippi or somewhere staying the night. And my brother texts me and says, oh my God, Mallory, you're not going to believe this. The Northern Lights are going off here. And I'm like, it's Georgia. No way. So they start sending me pictures and I am sick to my stomach because the entire time I was there, I wanted to do some astrophotography and it was cloudy. So that was strike number one. Strike number two for me, if you happen to tune into my solar eclipse video, um, you notice I didn't do a follow-up from that one and reason being, I got clouded out. I got my people here. We got clouds here. <laughs> I took a gamble in staying in our nearby town of Wimberley, Texas here, which was in the path of totality. And what makes me absolutely sick is at the point of um, the total solar eclipse, it completely clouded over here. But maybe 10, 15 minutes down the road, they got to see the ring of fire and, and, and everything. So I felt like I was uh, cursed or something this year. However, getting the meteor shower and Northern Lights is pretty flippin' cool. So that's all for today. I just wanted to provide a follow-up to my video as this is just, I felt like a once in a lifetime, a pretty cool experience. But I hope you've enjoyed this content. If you would like to learn more or follow along, be sure to hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future. Pop a comment below. I, I saw a lot of y'all had cloud cover, but how did it go for you? Were you able to capture some meteors or was it just me that I was facing the wrong direction? The right direction. Let me know how many meters were you able to capture during the 2024 Perseids meteor shower. But thank you so much for being here. I had an absolute blast shooting this event and already looking forward to the next celestial show, which I'll be sure to post a video of plans similar to how I did this to make sure that you're prepared as well. Wishing you clear skies, happy shooting, and in the meantime, we'll catch you on the next one.